adoration. Thank you, Lord Father, because there is truly no one like you. Father, Lord, you are a creator, you are a maker, you are a father, you are a friend. Father, we give you all praise and glory. As we open up this prayer session, Father, Lord, we pray that you have your way. Holy Spirit, we invite you in this place. Holy, Holy Spirit, come and dwell upon us. Rest upon our hearts, rest upon our spirits, rest upon our minds. Father, Lord, have your way. Take authority within us, O oh Lord. Father, Lord, go before us in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your words be spoken, O oh Lord, and not mine. Father, Lord, let your... Let your spirit, O Lord, let your um, you let your will, Father, O Lord, let your presence, O Lord, Father, be upon your daughters this morning in the mighty name of Jesus, O Lord. Father, I pray, Lord, that we receive from you what we need to receive, O Lord. Father, that we hear from you, O Lord, today. We get confirmations, O Lord. We get a revelation, O Lord, Father. We get motivation. We get, O Lord, Father, your will, your glory, your honor, O Lord, Father, shall be indeed, O Lord, Father, glorified and, and lifted up today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Welcome, ladies. We're just going to go into um, Thanksgiving, just honoring God. We're going to start with Psalm 139. I'm going to read it, actually. It says, Oh, Lord, you have examined my heart. You know everything about me. You know me. You know when I sit down and when I or stand up. You know my thoughts even when I'm far away. You see me when I travel, when I rest at home. You know everything I do. You know when I'm going, what I'm going to say even before I say it. You go before me and follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. You never escape from your, I can never escape your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. Even there, your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. Even, but even in darkness, I cannot hide from you. To you, the night shines as bright as day. Darkness and light are the same. Thank you for making me wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. How precious are your thoughts about me, O oh Lord? They cannot be numbered. I can't even count them. They, are out, they outnumber the grains of sand. And even when I wake up, you are still with me. Search me, O oh Lord, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you. Lead me along the path of everlasting life. We're going to do a praise report. We're just going to thank God. We're going to thank God for life. We're going to thank God for soundness of mind. Father, we just exalt your holy name. We thank you, Lord, Father, for that we are alive today. We thank you, Lord, that we are, that we are not in, um, um, in an asylum. We're not uh, desolate, Lord, Father, that we have soundness of mind, Lord, that we know who you are. We know who we are. Father, we thank you, Lord, Father, that we know that you are on our side, that you want us to succeed. You want us to be victorious. Father, you have an end for us, Lord, Father, that you, that you know, Lord Father, where we're going to be, and it is a victorious end in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we just thank you, Lord Father, for the battles that we cannot see that you're fighting on our behalf. Father, we just thank you. Thank you, Lord Father, because we know, Lord, there's rulers and principalities in the unknown realm that we cannot see, that we do not know about, Lord Father, but we know, Lord, that you are battling on our, on our behalf, Lord, that you are for us, Lord, and not against us in the mighty name of Jesus. We just thank you. Father, we thank you, Lord Father, for we know that um, we know Thank you for we know you are with us um, in the low seasons and the victorious seasons. Thank you, Father, because you never leave us. You never forsake us, O Lord, Father, that you are singing over us in the mighty name of Jesus, that your hand of protection is over us in the mighty name of Jesus, that you are speaking blessings over us, O Lord, Father, even if we are depressed, even if, Father, O Lord, we, we seem um, that we're failing, O Lord, Father, we know, Lord, that you are with us, O Lord, speaking victories over us in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank your Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you for your Holy Spirit, that your Holy Spirit is always with us watching over us and singing songs over us, oh Lord. Thank you, Lord Father, Lord, that, that um, for the victories to come, oh Lord, all the testimonies that will be given to the glory of your name. Father, we just, uh, we're grateful, oh Lord. We just thank you. Father, we know the testimonies are coming. More testimonies are coming. More victories are coming. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord Father, because we know, Lord Father, that um, even today, oh Lord Father, that we may not see it, oh Lord Father, we know it is coming because your word says so. Father, we know, Lord Father, that many, oh Lord Father, will give testimonies of your grace of your goodness, of how you, you, your, the promises, O Lord, that you've given unto us, O Lord, Father, shall come to fruition in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we exalt your holy name, we worship you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Next slide, please.
winning attitude. What does a winning attitude look like? How does it, how does it, um, how does it resonate? How does it form in us? How do we get there? How do we think winning all the time? It's a question that only you can answer. Um, in Deuteronomy chapter seven, verse six to nine, uh, for you are for you are a holy people. God declares that for you are a holy people who belong to the Lord your God. Of all the people on earth, the Lord your God has chosen you to be His very own special treasure. We're going to come back to the word treasure. Verse seven says, "The Lord did not set His heart on you and choose you because you were more numerous than other nations." Um, for you were the smallest of all nations. Remember the nation of Israel came from one man. It came from Abraham who had one son, Isaac, who had two sons and Jacob took over. Jacob's name was now turned to Israel and he had 12 sons who turned into the 12 tribes. So it was a very small nation. Rather, verse, six, verse, sorry, verse eight says, rather, it was simply that the Lord loved you. He was keeping the oath he had sworn to your ancestors. This is why the Lord rescued you from such a strong hand, from your slavery and from the oppression of, of the oppressive hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Understand therefore that the Lord your God is indeed God. He is faith. He is the faithful God who keeps his covenant for a thousand generations and lavishes his unfailing love on those who love him and obey his commandments. First, um, first Peter chapter 2 verse 9 says but you are not like that you are a chosen people you are a holy priest you are you are a holy priests a holy nation god's very own possession as a result you can you can show others the goodness of god for he called you out of the out of the darkness into his one into his wonderful light there's a reason why these two scriptures mimic each other. They're very, very similar, almost identical. And there's a reason why God has caused them to be identical. He spoke this in the Old Testament and then again in the New Testament to show the Gentiles that he considers them the same as he did the children of Israel. His adoptive children are the same as his, um, his claimed children um, of the nation of Israel. And it's for us to know that he considers us his treasure. Let's go back to that word. When we look at the word treasure, treasure means something that is close to your heart. Treasure means something that you hold close and dear to you, that it's, 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 the, the possession of it is, is greater than the other assets that it may have. Um, when you consider a treasure that you may have, it may be a close family friend, it might be um, a trinket that you've, that you've acquired, it has great value above all others um, that you may possess. And God considers us his treasure. He also has named us um, his own possession, his very own possession. God considers and has great value for us as his daughters and, and his children in the kingdom of God. And it's very important for us to know this, to understand this um, about, about our position, about our identity, in order for us to have a winning mentality. So we go into, so we go into mindset, and it's very important to know, like, about the confidence that we need to have in God. A mindset where we have confidence and assurance of who God is. You have to know that you know that you know um, that the blessings of God belongs to you. You have to know that you know without a shadow of a doubt that um, who God is and who we are to him and who we who we are in general. Um, you have to have Godfidence. I've heard the term Godfidence before. Um, it's to know that we have our confidence in the Lord and no one else. Um, it's foundational. It comes to the core of who we are and what we believe. And my, the mindset is what are you saying to yourself? Mindset comes to what you are saying, not what others are saying, but what you are saying on a daily basis and what do you believe? No one else can answer this question for you. Um, you know what you're saying to yourself. It goes back to a personal relationship with God. You must know what you believe. Um, what and who do you believe? What are you saying to yourself each and every day? Are you um, repeating the things of the world? Are you repeating um, you know, motivational things? Are you pe repeating the word of God? Um, Isaiah chapter 55 verse 11 says, it is the same with my word. I send it out and it always produces fruit. It will accomplish all I want it to and will prosper everywhere I send it. 
excuse me, this scripture is profound. It aligns, of course, with um, the scripture that we're all, always um, aware of, which is there's power and death in the, um, in, in the tongue. And those that um, eat of it will reap its benefits. But we want to make sure that we understand that we all have a lot of power in what we're saying to ourselves each and every morning when we wake up. You're saying something to yourself. You have a particular mindset. When you arise, you're going to either start work. You're either going to start school. You're either going to start um, um, with your children or with your spouse or whatever it may be. You are starting on something and, and you are saying something to yourself as soon as you wake up. And that is the foundation of your mindset. Are you greeting God? Are you saying good morning, Holy Spirit? Are you inviting the Holy Spirit into your, into your, um, your day? Are you, are you making sure that you know who you are and you're standing on that? Are you intentional with what you are saying to yourself? Because whatever you set out and say to the day is exactly what you will receive. The scripture has backed you up. So you must take advantage of it. You must claim that day. You must claim I am successful. You must claim I will be victorious in this meeting today. You must claim you will receive that contract if you're an entrepreneur. You're claiming my relationships will be successful, will be blessed, will be peaceful. You're claiming different things. My child shall get an A on their exam today. Um, that My child shall get into a good college. Whatever it may be, you're claiming it in the beginning of the day and you're saying it to yourself repeatedly. Um, God, <clears throat> let's look at the foundation of who we are in scriptures. Um, the, our mindset, of course, once again, like I said, is our identity. And no one else can answer this for you, as I said earlier. Um, it's, not what, it's what you're hearing again and again and what you're telling yourself about God. Uh, you have to believe that you're God's treasure. You have to believe it. And you, once again, you know that you know who God is and who you are to him. Um, a special possession, or his very own possession, a special treasure is deep. It's, a, it's, an, it's an additional, it's an additional uh, pronunciation of who we are, special treasure to God. Uh, he holds us in high esteem. You have to know who God is, and you have to know that he wants his treasure to win. You have to know that because you're God's special treasure, he wants us to be successful. He wants the best for us. He is for us and not against us. Um, we have to claim our inheritance. We have to claim what God has spoken over our lives, what he stated to us that belongs to us and no one else. Excuse me. This is, um, this is just the foundational thinking. Uh, next is you need to visualize it. Where do you, where do you see yourself? Uh, what do you want for your future? Uh, when you're claiming um, your or resetting your mindset, you have to visualize exactly where it is that you want to go. You have to visualize exactly what it is that you want uh, to achieve. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 27 says, it was by faith that Moses left the land of Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He kept right on going because he kept his eyes on the one who is invisible. This is profound because the vision that Moses had was set on God what he could not see. He visualized what he could not see. He visualized what he could not see. And he visualized a person. He visualized God, but he visualized what he could not see. You have to think about where it is that you want to go and see yourself in that position. You have to see yourself in that future place. Whether it's the next day, it's still future. Whether it's the next hour, it's still future. But he kept it on who God is. We cannot physically see God, but we know God. We can see his, his blessings. We can see his, his words. We can see um, his, 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 his love for us. We can see the things that he wants for us to achieve, especially through other people and especially through our own testimonies. But he kept his focus on who God is, who is invisible. It's very important for us to stay focused. It's very important for us to continuously see ourselves in that position that we're looking for based on what God has told us. Moses knew that the, it was, if we're, the position that they were in, being enslaved for 400 years is a very long time. He knew the history. He knew that this, this thing was virtually impossible. But, be kept, but because he kept his focus on who God was, he knew, he knew exactly 
that he that um, he would get to the result and what God told him. So there was many things that that um, that were that were discouraging. There was many reasons why he believed he could believe that it wasn't going to work because especially since Pharaoh was stubborn. But he kept on on the uh, on the on the on the vision. He kept on going on the mission. He kept focused on who God was, and he was determined to get there. And he was able to get there by the grace of God. We have to make sure that uh, we know who we are in Christ. We have to make sure that we know who we are serving. We have to know, we have to make sure that we catch the vision that God has placed for us. Let's go into prayer. Let's go to, into prayer now. Um, Father, we just want to start with the prayer points. It says, Lord, thank you for your Holy Spirit and your ability to change our thinking. We ask that you help us to reset, renew, and realign our mindset to be like yours. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 23 through 24 says, Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes to put on a new nature created to be like God, to create it to created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. Father, Lord, we just pray over, Father, Lord, that the, your Holy Spirit will come upon us on a daily basis, that it shall indeed, O oh Lord, Father, change the way that we think, that we shall allow the Holy Spirit to change the way that we think, that we shall allow and invite the Holy Spirit into our day. Father, Lord, that we shall reset and renew and realign our mindset to be like yours. Father, Lord, to be like yours, which is truly righteous and holy in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we just pray, Lord, Father, that you take full and absolute control, Lord, Father, of our lives, of our mindset, of our thinking in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, that we invite the Holy Spirit to transform us as only the Holy Spirit can do. Father, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, Father, we exalt you, we worship you in the mighty name of Jesus. Um, next prayer point, I believe, is to um, change is that we should not listen to the customs of this world, that we should not allow the customs of this world to dictate onto us. So we're just waiting for the slide to come forward so I can read the scripture. Let us ask, Sorry, we're having technical difficulties. Let us ask the Lord to abandon what society has taught us. Um, that society has ingrained in us certain um, mythologies, certain ways of thinking. So we're going to ask the Holy Spirit to abandon, um, help us to abandon what we've, what society has told us we should, we need to do. And we're going to focus on Romans chapter twelve, verse two. It says, "Do not copy the behaviors and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way." you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Holy Father, we just want to come before you, Lord, and help help us, Lord Father, to abandon what society has taught us, the way to think, the way to operate, O Lord Father, that we shall indeed, Father Lord, excuse me, let you transform us into a new person. And this is done by changing the way that we think, changing the way that we operate, changing our mindset, changing our foundational thinking, changing our foundational beliefs, the Lord, at the core of who we are. Father, Lord, that we will learn to know your will for us, the Lord, Father. And your perfect will, Father, is good and it's pleasing. And it is once again perfect, oh Lord, that your will for us, the Lord, Father, transcends everything else that we have been taught in society. Father, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you take full and absolute control of our mindset, take full and absolute control over, Father, Lord, of the, of the way that we think and operate in the mighty name of Jesus, oh Lord, that we should not allow, Father, Lord, the, the ways of society, the ways of the world to dictate to us how we shall think, how we should operate in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we just thank you. Father, we exalt your holy name. Father, we pray, Lord, that you help us, oh Lord. Father, Lord, we pray, Lord, Father, that you take full and absolute control, oh Lord, Father, what we listen to. Father, we take full and absolute control Oh, Lord, Father, what we allow to be inserted into our spirits, oh Lord, allow to be inserted, Father, and, 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 and be laid for our foundation in you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let us ask the Holy Spirit to help us visualize the vision. Visualize the vision, which is his, to hold tight to it. We, let us pray daily in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray daily towards our vision. Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 2 to 3 says, then the Lord said, to me, write my answer plainly on tablets so that a runner can carry the correct message to others. The vision is for a future time. It describes the end and it's 
and it will be fulfilled. It seems slow in coming. Wait patiently, for it will surely take place. It will not be delayed. Father Lord, we just thank you, Lord, Father Lord, for the vision, which belongs to you. Father Lord, the ideas, oh Lord, that we have, it comes from you. Father Lord, that you, oh Lord, Father, are the one that gave the vision to Moses. You, oh Lord, are the one that gave the vision to all of our ideas, oh Lord, that we have, that we have birthed, oh Lord. Father Lord, the dreams that we have, oh Lord, Father, that are of you, oh Lord, Father, you have placed them on our hearts. Father, oh Lord, in Psalm 139, you said, oh Lord, that you formed us in utter seclusion in our mother's womb. Father, Lord, that you have numbered our days and you have already laid them out. Father, you know what we are going to do before we do it. You know what we are going to say before we say it. Father, Lord, that you have already implanted in us who we are going to be, what we are going to be able to accomplish, oh Lord, the purpose that you have aligned for our lives, oh Lord. Father, you have laid it out in our mother's womb. Before, Lord, we were formed, you knew exactly that today would be happening, that we'll be praying on this prayer line today. Father, Lord, you know exactly what will happen tomorrow. Father, even though we have planned out what will happen uh, tomorrow and this and today, in this week, in this month, this year, for the rest of the year, Father, but you know exactly what will happen, O oh Lord, for nothing comes as a surprise unto you. Father, Lord, that you have already placed the vision before us, O oh Lord. It is for us to receive it. It is for us, O oh Lord, Father, to capture it and to run with it. It is for us to write it down. Father, Lord, this vision, O oh Lord, Father, is your vision, O oh Lord. Father, oh Lord, what you speak over us, O oh Lord, Father, is what has come from you, O oh Lord. I pray, Father, Lord, that we realign ourselves, O oh Lord, to be able to capture it. We realign ourselves, Lord, to be able to receive your perfect will, Father, Lord, which is good and pleasing, O oh Lord. Father, Lord, we pray, O oh Lord, Father, that we are in alignment with your Holy Spirit, and we have positioned ourselves, O oh Lord, Father, to know, O oh Lord, and to have a mentality and a mindset that is aligned with you, O oh Lord, that will glory and glorify your name and honor you, O oh Lord. Father, we just thank you, O oh Lord, that we shall hold tight onto this vision, O oh Lord, that we shall hold tight, O oh Lord, onto our the future that you have planned for us in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, Let's also pray that we would that we will not lose that we will not lose the vision, even if it takes long for us to physically see it, that we will not lose it, even though it tarries. Romans chapter 4, verse 20 through 21 says, Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise. In the in fact, his faith grew stronger, and in this he brought glory to God. He was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promises. Let us hold tight as Abraham held tight, that it was many years before he saw the promises of God, that he saw the vision of God come to fruition in his life. Let us hold tight as Abraham held tight, that he did not waver in his knowing that God will accomplish he is true to accomplish his word, that the vision that God placed on Abraham's life to be the father of nations, he knew it would happen. He knew it would come true. He held tightly to it. Let us also hold tightly, O oh Lord, that even though we may not see, O oh Lord Father, that marriage, we may not see those children yet. We may not see that business. We may not see that deal. We may not see that trip. We may not see that financial breakthrough yet. Father, we know because you want us to succeed, because we know that you are our, that you, um, that we are your special treasure, O Lord, that your very own possession, because we know these foundational things. Father, you are true to, to for your promises to, to come to fruition, O Lord, that you are true, O Lord, Father, O Lord, to indeed, O Lord, Father, your promises for your promises to um to 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 be realized in the mighty name of Jesus, that in, in the mighty name of Jesus, that indeed, O oh Lord Father, that we shall have testimonies, O oh Lord, that we shall speak, O oh Lord Father, O oh Lord, of our victories in you in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, O oh Lord, that even though, Lord, society, even though um, daily, O oh Lord Father, issues, O oh Lord, may arise, distractions, O oh Lord Father, O oh Lord, may come, O oh Lord, discouragements, Father, O oh Lord, may happen, challenges and obstacles may show themselves, O oh Lord. Father, because we know who you are, because we know that you have declared this over our lives, because we know know, Lord Father, that that is the same as your word as you send it out. It, pro it always produces fruit. Father, we know that indeed, O oh Lord Father, that victory is ours, O oh Lord, that we shall see the promises of the Lord upon our lives in the mighty name of Jesus, O oh Lord, that we rest assured, O oh Lord Father, indeed, Father, O oh Lord, indeed, sh we shall be victorious. Indeed, O oh Lord Father, we shall accomplish everything, O oh Lord Father, that you have spoken over us, that you have sang over us, O oh Lord, Father, O oh Lord, that your hand of blessing placed upon our heads, O oh Lord, it is not in vain, but indeed, O oh Lord Father, 
is to declare that we are a holy people, O Lord. It's to declare, O Father, Lord, that our future is set and our future is bright in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we just thank you, O Lord. We exalt your holy name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, we pray. Amen. Next screen. Thank you. <clears throat> Victory belongs to God. <clears throat> Excuse me. Victory belongs to the creator of the universe. First Chronicles chapter 28 verse 9 says, And Solomon, my son, learn to know the God of your ancestors intimately, intimately. Worship and serve him with your whole heart and a willing mind. For the Lord sees every heart and knows every plan and thought. If you seek him, you will find him. But if you forsake him, he will reject you forever. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 says, It is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 through 2 says, Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven. When where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. These scriptures are imploring us to make sure that we focus and we seek out God. That even though um, we have caught the vision, we have to seek God in order for the vision to be fulfilled, in order for the vision to come to fruition. Even if we have received the prophecy, even if we received um, the plan and purpose, even if we have received what God has told us and the vision of our future um, to come and our purpose, we have to go back and seek God continuously. God is God is paramount in the in the process of our victory. God is paramount in the process of how we will get there, how we will achieve the victory that we are seeking. The winning mindset is the mindset of seeking God. The winning mindset um, need for us to achieve the winning mindset. We need to make sure that we know who is going to help us to accomplish that. Um, Jeremiah 29 verse 13 says, if you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. There's a reason why God is asking um, Solomon. There's a reason why God is asking us to seek him with our hearts, not just our minds, not just our routines, but with our hearts and to intimately seek God. God is looking for a relationship with us in order for us to to accomplish and to achieve the success that we're looking for. Excuse me. Um, once we have this understanding that our hearts need to be laid out before God, um, it's important for us to make sure that we continuously do it on a daily basis. This is a easy, um, sorry, this is a simple endeavor, but it is not easy. Um, there's, that's, that's a term that I've realized over the past few years, that the pursuing God, seeking God with our whole hearts is a simple enough concept, but it is not easy. There's so many distractions. There's so many things that take our, via our attention. There's so many emotions that go into accomplishing our tasks for the day, for the year, for our relationships, for work, whatever it may be. It's simple enough to seek God with all of our heart, but it, it's not easy. There's things that we have to put in place in order to do this. There's simple things that we need to do, but they are not easy things to do. As soon as you wake up, it's, it's simple enough to say, God, come before me and take glory. But it is not easy. We have to discipline ourselves. We have to, we have to be intentional about the time that we spend. We have to make sure that even though these simple tasks are there, we have to put things in place that will allow us to accomplish this goal. Simply speaking the words is good, but we have to make sure that our hearts are involved, that our hearts are constantly surrendered and postured to receive what God has to tell us in order to move forward in um, seeking him. And David, um, David is a, is, a good, is a good example of, of how he sought after God, um, even though he, he knew the vision, even though he knew what he was going to be able to um, accomplish um, when his 
his family was raided. In Psalm, uh, sorry, in First Samuel chapter thirty, verse eight, it says, "Then David asked the Lord, Should I chase after the band of raiders? Will I catch them?" And the Lord told him, "Yes, go after them. You will surely recover everything that was taken from you." Um, this is after a great battle was won. Uh, won uh, David's family was taken uh, uh, by the Philistines, I believe, and his. His wives were taken, his children was taken, his men's wives and children were taken from them. And they were, they were about to crucify him. They were about to kill him. But he knew that who, he knew the purpose that God had for his life, that he would be king, the king of um, Israel. He knew who he was. He had caught the vision of and the purpose that God had for his life. And he knew that he would be successful in chasing after these um, these people that stole uh, his family and uh, his men's family from him and their treasures. But he still took time to ask God. He still took time to seek God. He still took time to involve God in what he wanted to do because he knew he knew that he needed to involve God. Even though he knew he would be successful, even if he didn't console God, he still took the time because he had a heart for God. He, had, he was seeking God with his heart. He was taking time to do the simple thing, not the easy thing. Because he, he, the, you can imagine the situation he was in. People are ready to kill you. Um, something that you hold dear to you has been taken from you. you. Of course you want to run. Of course you want to pursue them. Of course you want to go after them. But he took a beat. He took a second. He took time to seek and ask God, what should we do? He knew what to do, but he said, I'm going to still ask my creator. I'm still going to ask the one that has given me the vision. What should I do? If we put ourselves in David's position in our current day-to-day -day life, we know that we're going to own a business. We know that we are going to get married we know that we're going to have children. We know that we're going to maybe take a specific trip. We know that we're going to have um, close the deal on this house. We know what is going to happen because God has given us this vision, whatever it may be in our situations, in our lives. But we, if we take that second, if we take that second to say, God, I know that you told me that this belongs to me. This property belongs to me. This job belongs to me. You've already told me, but you're still, before you take action, maybe before you sign a contract, maybe before you, um, you get into uh, the cab to, or before you catch your train, whatever it may be, if you take a second to say, God, I'm still asking you, is this the right step? Has your vision changed? Has your, has your, um, your, your, the goals that you have for me, has it changed? Even though it's it's one second, has it changed? Just to ask God and say, I'm involving you in all of my steps, Lord, because you gave me this vision. God is going to, is, as we know, David was, um, God declared David as a man after his own heart. God was touched by the little things that David did like this. Even though it was actually a big thing, God was still touched by it. He said, this man is after my own heart. He knows what to do, but he's still coming for it. He's still coming before me asking my opinion. If we do the same thing in our own lives, God is going to look at us with favor. He's going to look at us as this is my daughter asking after me. I've already told her that this job belongs to her. I've already told her that this position belongs to her, that she will take this trip, that this, this, um, this house is hers, this marriage is hers, that she will receive this child, but she's still coming to me asking me, what do I think? What should I do? God is going to indeed make sure that whatever it is that we receive is double fold, is triple fold, that indeed we shall recover all, indeed that we shall receive whatever it is that, that he has placed on our hearts and our minds to receive. That even if we're about to miss maybe a, um, a, a meeting and we say, God, before I go into this meeting, I'm five minutes late or I'm, gonna, I'm running late for this meeting, but I'm still taking time to go before God and asking him, what, in this meeting, what would you have me say to these people? How should I approach them? How should I, um, how should I be able to present what I need to present before them? God will cause that meeting to hold for you that it shall wait for you. God is the creator of time. God is the creator of all things around us. 
he is able indeed to make sure that we have favor is he's able indeed to make sure that we have grace is he's able to indeed make sure that we have victory in all of the things that we endeavor to do if we seek him out if we ask him before we do anything it's not easy it's simple, but it is not easy to do. And that's what we need to make sure that we master if we know that we are going to receive victory because it doesn't belong to us. It belongs to God. Everything that we do, it is for God's glory. Let's, um, we, need to pr- we need to thank and praise God. Um, as Psalm 145 has said uh, in verses 8, um, 18 to 21, it says, Lord, uh, the Lord is close to all who call on him. Yes, to all who call on him in truth. He grants in the desires of our heart, who, the desires of those who fear him. And he hears the cries for help and rescues them. The Lord protects all those who love him. I will praise the Lord and may everyone on earth bless his holy name forever and ever. Father, Lord, we come before you, Lord, and we want to pray, Lord, as matured followers to continually seek your face. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 says, seek the kingdom of God above all else. Live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. Father, Lord, we just pray before you, Lord, as we seek you, Lord, Father, that everything else shall follow, Lord. As we run after you and chase after you, Lord, Father, we shall indeed what what we need to live um how we need to live righteously O lord the things O lord father that we need to be able to do to be successful everything else O lord father indeed O lord shall come our way because of you because we are seeking your face in the mighty name of jesus we pray our hearts will be sensitive towards god's perfect will father lord i pray lord that we posture our hearts to receive from you in the mighty name of jesus we pray in the mighty name of jesus that you allow us O lord excuse me to receive your will um perfectly, O oh Lord, Father, O oh Lord, that we have a heart, O oh Lord, Father, conditioned, O oh Lord, to hear your voice, O oh Lord, Father, to be able to receive your vision again and again each day in the mighty name of Jesus. Matthew chapter 26, verse 39 says, he went on a little farther and bowed with his face to the ground, praying, my father, it is, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Yet I want your will done above done not mine jesus here is is talking about before he he goes to be crucified the next day he knows what is coming but he dreads it he knows this is the vision of god for his life um to be crucified he does not want it but he surrenders his will he surrenders his heart to god's will father lord let us have this heart like jesus even though we know there's something we may not want to do but because we have cut the vision of lord because we, have, we know the purpose of lord that you want us to 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 accomplish oh lord father that we shall surrender our will and our hearts to you in the mighty name of jesus knowing that you know infinitely more than us oh lord knowing that the victory is yours oh lord and not us it is not about us it is about god it is not about what we want or the ideas or oh that random ideas that may come but it is about what you have instilled in us and what you have told us father lord that we may indeed oh lord surrender unto your will in jesus christ's mighty name we pray we pray a daily renewal of worship and thanksgiving to you. Father, Lord, let us know, Lord, Father. There's a, there's a, there's a phrase, sorry, there's a phrase that, that recently came um, to me through a pastor um, at our church. He said, the longer your worship, the shorter the prayer point. The longer your worship, the shorter your prayer point. The more we praise God, the more we worship God, the shorter our prayer point. There's many things that we're all praying for, many long-standing prayer points, long-standing issues. But but that that phrase has, just it just jumped out at me. The longer that we praise God, the longer we worship God, the shorter our prayer point. God dwells in the praises of his people. God wants us to worship him in spirit and in truth. God wants to, God dwells and enjoys. The, the songs that we sing to him, the dancing that we declare over him. So the longer we praise him, the longer we worship him, the shorter the prayer point will be. We will find that our issues are eliminated sooner, the more that we are worshiping and praising before God. Psalm 145 says, um, Psalm 145 verses one through six says, I will exalt you, I will exalt you my God and my King and praise your name forever and ever. 
I will praise you every day. Yes, I'll praise you forever. Great is the Lord. He is most worthy of praise. No one can measure his greatness. Let each generation tell its children of your mighty acts. Let them proclaim your power. Father, Lord, we just thank you, Lord. Father, that we will continuously worship you day in and day out, oh Lord. Father, on a daily basis, Father, we shall seek your face, oh Lord. Father, oh Lord, we shall sing songs to you. We shall dance before you. Father, Lord, as we are dancing, as we are seeking you, as we're asking for your advice, Father, oh Lord, we know, Lord, that our prayer points shall be shorter because we have understood the foundational aspect of seeking you out. The victory belongs to you. That knowing, oh Lord, Father, the mindset that we have, oh Lord, is established on a daily basis. That we have to reestablish it each morning, oh Lord, Father, that we just thank you for this idea. We thank you, Lord Father, for this revelation. We thank you, Lord Father, for knowing, oh Lord, that you are for us and not against us in the mighty name of Jesus. May we continuously, Father, have cause to praise you. Continuously seek out your face. Seek out your um, your vision for our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us know the longer, oh Lord Father, that we praise you, oh Lord, the, the shorter our prayer point will need to be. The shorter, oh Lord Father, the way, O Lord, Father, to receive the promises that you have for us, O Lord. I pray, Father, that we surrender our will unto your will in the mighty name of Jesus, O Lord. We pray, O Lord, Father, that we surrender, O Lord, Father, um, our hearts unto you, O Lord, that we seek you with our hearts, that we seek you, Father, O Lord, with our sincere, um, with our sincere posture, with a sincere posture in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, O Lord, we just exalt your holy name. Father, we come before you. Holy Spirit, we invite you in in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, have have your way. Be exalted in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Thank you, Father, Lord. Thank you, Father, for all that you have done. Thank you, Father, for all that you will continuously do in our lives. We give you praise, worship, honor, and adoration in Jesus Christ's mighty name, we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to go into um, the time of praying for the persecuted church. Persecuted church in Kuwait. Um, we need to talk about the background of uh, um, the, the this country. The leader is Sheikh Sab Sabah Alad Al Jabbar Al Sabah. The government is a con constitutional monarchy. The religion is Islam. The source of persecution is Islamic oppression. The population is four million one hundred ninety-seven thousand um, and the Christians are four hundred. 436,000. In Kuwait, uh, Islam still shapes uh, the public life. Uh, therefore, criticism, therefore, criticizing Islam's or the Prophet of Muhammad would lead to public persecutions. Ku Kuwait provide, um, prohibits religious expressions that violate Islamic customs. The number the number and size of registered places of worship are not sufficient for the number of people who wish to attend church because it is so difficult to obtain property for Christian gatherings. Persecution is worse for those who live in Islam that follow Christ. Uh, they are discriminated, harassed, and their activities even are even monitored by the, po um, by the police. Uh, teaching Christianity in schools is prohibited. Um, we just want to come before God and pray concerning concerning the country of Kuwait and the Christians in Kuwait as well. Uh, prayer points consist of uh, that we thank God for the lives of the persecuted Christians in Kuwait. That we pray that while suffering physical um, physical treats treatment um, and even imprisonment, they would excuse me, they would understand the promises of Second Corinthians chapter twelve verse nine, which says. My grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Father, Lord, we just come before you and pray concerning the Christians in Kuwait. Father, we pray, Lord, Father, that even though while they're physically being mistreated, O Lord, and, impri and imprisoned, Father, Lord, that they shall remember your promises, O Lord, Father, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. Father, Lord, that we shall know, they, sh they shall know, Lord, Father, that your power rests upon them. The power of Christ, O Lord, Father, is upon them in the mighty name of Jesus, O Lord. Father, Lord, that even though they shall be um, have weaknesses, O oh Lord Father, and struggles, O oh Lord Father, that you are with them, O oh Lord, that you, O oh Lord Father, um, are surrounding them, O oh Lord Father, in your in your grace, in your um, joy, Father, O oh Lord, in your protection and your love, in Jesus' name, 
Amen. Uh, let us pray that the Church of Kuwait in these trying times are able to see, like Paul, that their hardship helps them rely on God, who is far more powerful than any man. For we were so utterly burdened beyond our strength that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt that we had received a sentence of death. Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 7 through 9, but, but that was, excuse me, <coughs> But that was to make us rely not on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. Father, Lord, we just come before you, O Lord, and we pray, O Lord, Father, in these trying times for the church in Kuwait, O Lord, Father, that they shall be able to see um, you and their hardships, O Lord. They shall be able to rely on you, O Lord, that they, they shall know who you are in the mighty name of Jesus, O Lord. Father, Lord, that even though they may be despairing, O Lord, Father, they know that their God is fighting on their behalf, that you that they know, O Lord, Father, that even if they um, are persecuted to death, they shall rise again, O Lord, Father, to see you in the heavenly realms, O oh Lord, Father, that they shall have confidence in who you are, that their foundation shall be shall be laid upon your word and what you speak over them. In Jesus Christ, my name we pray. Amen. Pray that the church in Kuwait will experience the overflowing comfort of Christ through the very the, the very real and abundant presence of the Holy Spirit. Second Corinthians chapter one, verse three to five says, Who comforts us all? Um, in all our troubles. Father, Lord, we just pray the Holy Spirit rests upon the Christians in Kuwait. Father, we pray, oh Lord, that your Holy Spirit resides in them, O oh Lord, that it, Father, it comforts them in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we just thank you, O oh Lord, Father, for your Holy Spirit being present with your children, your daughters, and your sons, O oh Lord, Father, in Kuwait. Thank you, O oh Lord, Father, for their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray that their relationship with you um, grows, O oh Lord, Father, and is foundationally based, O oh Lord, on your teachings in Jesus' name. Pray that the suffering of Christ by the persecuted um, Christians in Kuwait will be clear, strong testimony of Christ bringing him glory. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 3 verses 15 to 16 says, but do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a good conscience. Father, Lord, we pray, Lord, Father, for Christians in Kuwait, Lord, Father, to have a strong and clear testimony of Christ in their lives. Father, Lord, that they shall represent him well. Father, Lord, that they shall indeed see, Lord, Father, um, who, who Christ is, um, and they shall bring you glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray that the Christians in Kuwait will one day have the freedom to worship Christ for their ultimate deliverance and glory in Christ. Romans chapter 8, verses 17 through 18. Excuse me. 17, I can't see. Father, we just pray, Father, concerning the Christians in Kuwait, Father, Lord, they, they shall indeed receive freedom to worship you Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, O Lord. They shall not have to worry, O Lord, Father, about um, where they gather, O Lord, to seek out your face, but they shall indeed receive, O Lord, Father, um, the ability, O Lord, Father, to worship you openly, O Lord, and profoundly, O Lord. They shall be able to op openly worship you, O Lord, and glorify your name, O Lord, Father, without being ashamed and without hiding in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we just thank you, O Lord, Father. We exalt your holy name. We worship you. We thank you, Father, for the persecuted church. Uh, we thank you, Father, for the Christians in Kuwait. We thank you for their families. We thank you, Lord, Father, for their endeavors to seek you out, O Lord, Father, to worship you, O Lord, Father, with their whole hearts. Father, even though, Lord, there's threat, O Lord, Father, of, um, of persecution, there's threat, O Lord, Father, of imprisonment, there's threat, O Lord, Father, O Lord, of uh, criticisms from their family. Father, Lord, they still choose, O Lord, Father, to worship you. They still choose, O Lord, to pursue you. They still choose, O Lord, Father, to honor you. Father, Lord, Lord, we pray that you take all of the glory, O oh Lord, in their endeavors. We pray, O oh Lord, Father, that you grant them favor. You grant them, O oh Lord, Father, protection. You grant them, O oh Lord, Father, um, rest, O oh Lord. You grant them, O oh Lord, Father, joy in the mighty name of Jesus. Let their testimonies, Father, be often. Let their, their victories, O oh Lord, Father, resound in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we exalt your holy name. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you very much, Shadi for leaving us in that wonderful time of prayer. It was really awesome. Um, and also just praying for the persecuted church in Kuwait. We believe that truly, as we continue to lift these nations up unto the Lord, we will see a great revival, according to the word of God. And we, as we have declared it this morning, so shall it be in the mighty name of Jesus. I wanna thank um, anyone who has logged into today's call. Um, you probably may have uh, joined or you're seeing this on our uh, YouTube account. 
thank you very much for being a part of it. This is Esther's preparation room. Um, we believe that the, um, the, the time that we have spent in prayer, that uh, our life will definitely <clears throat> not be the same again in Jesus' name. You can follow us if you can hear me click on the next screen on any of our uh, social media handles. Um, and we look forward to us um, spending more time together in a place of prayer. Uh, if you just do a quick check on our YouTube page, you can see a lot of our different prayer topics. Uh, this should, we've done this to encourage and to provide you with just tools that can help you to pray. We pray the word, we pray scripture. Every single prayer point, we stand on God's word and that's why we are assured of victory. Thank you once again and we look forward to you joining us in prayer next week. Thank you.